Hey guys, it's Meg and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm setting up my new journal ready for January and let's just get into it. So my bullet journal theme for this January is coffee and I'm really excited because I haven't actually done a coffee theme before. I've done a couple that incorporate it like I did a cozy theme that had some coffee inspired bits in it. But this is my first dedicated coffee theme and I know it's quite a popular one. So I think this one should be a really fun one for you guys to recreate if you haven't yet decided on your themes for January. I've decided on this small bubbly kind of font for this month. Just something about it, I thought it went well with the coffee theme, don't really know why. And I also want this setup to be kind of minimalist. So just focusing on some cute bubbly lettering and some little illustrations of different coffee cups. Let me know down in the comments what is your go-to coffee order. I am personally very basic and I like a vanilla latte and I really like it iced as well. Although over the Christmas season, I've definitely been enjoying the toffee nut latte from Starbucks with the vegan whip topping, of course. But yeah, let me know what your go-to coffee order is. And I am then just decorating the whole page with little coffee beans because I think they're so cute, they're so easy to draw. And I just think it ties the whole theme together really well, bringing in those warm browns that make you think of coffee. My colour scheme for this theme is going to be pretty classic as well as incorporating some pinks which you can sort of tell by the pens scattered around my journal around the edge but this could be somewhere where you really make it your own you definitely don't have to do what would be the classic typical coffee colours it would look super cute in loads of different pastel colours or you could do it all black and white and have it really minimal totally up to you but you could really have fun with this i just quite like the idea of having a darker and warmer color scheme for january because it's a little bit gloomy outside and i just think that is so nice to open up your journal and have something that makes you feel a bit warmer and coffee definitely does that for me but here i'm just coloring in my little bubble letters in a dusky pink a pale peachy pink and then a pale brown which to me just kind of says milkshake and cappuccino colors which i guess is where the inspiration for this color palette has come from but i think it looks really cute and i did also then use a really pale gray just to add a little drop shadow to help lift it all off the page the next page i'm going to be setting up is the calendar page so I've got the cover on the left hand side and then the calendar is on the right and this is just a really simple grid setup page and as you're looking at it right now that is it side on so I have done it horizontally just so I can have a little bit more space per day to write things in that I need to and in my journal this is five dot squares wide by five dot squares tall per square of the calendar if that makes sense this wouldn't necessarily work for every month because it depends whether the days fall into six weeks or five but in january it falls across five weeks so those measurements work okay for this month but yeah it's just a really basic spread and i've put a few coffee beans around the outside to help tie it into the cover page on the left but because the cover page is quite busy with the coffee beans, I didn't want to add too many and make it kind of crazy. And I also added some little bubble lettering that says what's on, just because I thought that was kind of cute and a little bit more fun than just writing calendar. <laughs> But then I'm again just using that light grey to add a drop shadow and that's the calendar page all complete. So now moving on to the mood tracker, I'm just starting off with those simple bubble letters down at the bottom and then using a really simple key, just a square next to a little smiley face emoji to represent the different moods. The squares are there for me to colour in with the choice of pen that I'm going to use to represent each mood, which I'll pick when I come to filling it in. But as you might have guessed, I have decided just to go with the simple coffee beans for the mood tracker. So I'll colour in a different coffee bean each day of the month, depending on how the mood is. If you were doing a coffee theme, you could take this a little bit more detailed and do different coffee cups, for example, for each day. But I just wanted to go simple, make it kind of quick and easy, which I do always recommend with a mood tracker. Using a little illustration that you can easily repeat 31 times is pretty useful and it means it takes a lot less time to set up. But no matter how simple the illustrations you choose are, make sure you definitely sketch them out in pencil first because although the illustration might not need a pencil sketch underneath for you to get it right, the spacing definitely will and it is kind of misleading how long it takes me to get all of these coffee beans to fit on the page and without looking kind of clustered in one area and then random gap in another. 
and as you will see as I start to put the numbers onto this page I did actually miss one and that is with sketching it out so I don't even know how that happened but just goes to show how easy it is to make mistakes here and not that it matters but just save yourself the hassle and maybe count them and sketch them before you start adding the pen. Now the last of the monthly spreads for January is a one line a day page and I always get asked what do I use this for, what do I write, that sort of thing. So an example of what I would suggest to you to write is either a summary of the day because I think it's such a nice way to look back and just have a little glimpse of what you were up to even if it was like met friend for a coffee and went out for a meal something like that just to give a little summary of what you were up to so that's a really nice way to do it and another way I suggest is using it for gratitude so you write a line about something you were grateful for that day and the two often work well together so you could even alternate or just do a mixture of the two they do sometimes overlap as well often what you're grateful for might be what you did that day for example so I just think it's a nice way to have a little recap of what you were doing during the month and see it all at a glance on one page. It is also a really simple one to set up you just need the days of the month down the left hand side each gets one line of course which is why it's called one line a day and then you could leave it blank but I like to add a pale-ish colour to each of the lines just to help it tie in with the theme and add some colour to the page basically. I just finished the page off with a few little coffee beans and that is the one line a day page all complete. And finally I'm going to show you the setup for my first January weekly spread. I don't normally include this on my plan with me as I like to make the weekly spreads as I go along and I also film them for TikTok and YouTube shorts and all of that. But I thought I'd include the first one just to give everybody an idea of the kind of spreads that I'm going to be including and just to get the ball rolling so you're ready set up for the first week of January. I've of course incorporated my January bubble writing as I have done throughout the monthly spreads because this just helps it have a cohesive feel to it and ties all of the monthly pages together and the weekly spreads together even though each page will be slightly different. Using the same fonts and the same colours obviously is what gives it that cohesive theme. I have then done some simple boxes not even using a ruler because I thought with it being a coffee theme if the lines were a little bit wobbly it doesn't really matter and I've drawn some splats which I will colour in different coffee colours which is where I'm going to write the day and the date. So as I said in my 2024 bullet journal setup video this year I am going to go back to using my bullet journal as a to-do list which is how I started things off and it did work really well for me I know a lot of people like to write a lot in their journals but as I share online the to-do list style just works better for what I'm up to plus I do really love a to-do list and it helps me keep on track with everything so the little boxes for each day will be used just to write my to-do list for that day really simple and I also tend to use the key from the classic bullet journal method or at least some of it which I can explain in another video if you'd like to see that. So the boxes will have the to-do list as I said and then as well on this weekly spread in the top right hand corner I've got two little trackers which you'll notice weren't included as part of my monthly spreads. So the top left one is a sleep tracker just the simple days across the bottom axis and down the left hand side I've got numbers 1 to 8 which represents the number of hours that I've slept and I will then just do a simple bar graph up to the number of hours I slept that day. The other one is a pages tracker for how many pages I've read as one of the things I want to focus on is reading some of the nice new books that I got for Christmas and again just a small tracker to see how I'm getting on with that without it being a full monthly tracker spread that is then a little bit intimidating and maybe adds a bit too much pressure to something that is just meant to be a bit of fun but I still want to have a little way to track it each week. I think using the little weekly spread trackers is also really useful if you're not quite sure what habits you're wanting to build because at the start of the new year especially it can be a bit overwhelming to try and decide the whole of your life that you're gonna overhaul during January so I think that means each week you could then pick something else to focus on maybe it's reading maybe it's hydration or working out or anything like that and then each week you can change it up see how you're getting on if it's not something that's really sticking for you you can swap it out the next week and don't have to worry about having a monthly tracker page just totally empty halfway through the month at the start of your journal. But there we have it, that is my January bullet journal all set up ready for the new month and the new year as well. We've got the cover page, the calendar page, 
the mood tracker, the one line a day, and also the first weekly spread up and running, ready to go. Let me know if you enjoyed me including the weekly spread, as that's something I don't normally do. And if it helped you out, then I'll gladly keep it coming for the next month's plan with me. But yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I next upload. Happy New Year, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.